Hello. Um, I'm actually a Rubyist, and is this quite loud? And a JavaScript developer per trade, so CSS is kind of like a necessity for me. Um, so this talk is how to sneak JavaScript into a CSS conf. Uh, I'm going to give you a walking tour of how PostCSS works, and I'm going to teach you how I, can how I integrated it to an e-commerce platform to convert that platform from English to Arabic. So I tried a whole bunch of things, and I was trying to make it fail, because I wanted this to be a story of agony, because they're way more fun to watch. Um, I find tragedy is the best, the best story. Um, OK, so about me. I do a mean Ron Swanson impression. Uh, my name is Lachlan Priest. I go by at LC Priest pretty much everywhere. There are two Lachlan Priests on this planet. One's a 16-year-old 16 Australian, and he stole my Twitter handle. He followed Justin Bieber and then stopped using Twitter. So I'm just going to give it to him, and you won this one. Dick. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so most of the time, you find me working on Ruby on Rails and Ember.js, so I always hear, so is Ruby dead yet? Is Ember.js dead yet? I'm like, nope, just going to go back to my work now. Um, so it's, 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 what I work on is mostly closed source, but I try and contribute one thing a week back to open source, generally in systems or integrations that I'm working with like closely. Um, not really sure why Thomas let me speak at a CSS conf, but let's go. So I work for TradeGecko. That's this group up front. They're my coworkers, and I've asked them to laugh for me. So just use their cue. Um, so this little guy, he's Moko. I have stickers if you want some stickers. He was invented by our design team, and he is the embodiment of our company. That's his uh, James Bond theme, I think. Shaken, not stirred. Uh, my official job title is the most huggable engineer. OK, so post CSS. Uh, it is. Who knows? Um, it sounded cool, and I wanted to remove SAS from a JavaScript project we're working on, because we have one main API, and I was building an e-commerce platform that used that API but didn't need to have any backend services. So I didn't want a lib SAS dependency, uh, so I decided to use PostCSS. So what is it? I have no idea. Well, I had no idea. Whenever I do a blog or a talk, I like to pick something I've never touched before and learn about it. So that's what I did. How do you learn about things? Go to GitHub. Great, this tells me nothing. Uh, it is a tool for transforming styles with JS plugins. That means nothing to me. OK, but if you look down further, it's talking about how PostCSS passes CSS and lets you do other things. So it does nothing by itself, but with other things, you can do magic. OK, so when I started this, this talk, I had a hypothesis that I would fail at this, and it would be a great story of me failing at something. Anyway. Uh, and the point I wanted to make was that it's more important to do your job than to play with new technologies. Being with Ruby on Rails and Ember.js, everyone asked me why we haven't moved to Go or some new fancy language that is great. We didn't move because it's a lot of effort and I want to do features. Uh, so now with PostCSS, I wanted to find out what I can use it for. OK, so I'll take an input file. This is some CSS, as you can see. I install PostCSS and run it. I had to include this plugin on the far right, which I wrote. Uh, because you can't even run PostCSS without a plugin. It does nothing, don't worry. This is the output. It's exactly the same. What does PostCSS do? It's not a preprocessor. The main thing you hear when you talk about PostCSS is that it's not SAS, it's not LESS, it doesn't do any of those things, but it can. It's just a parser, and it passes your CSS into a series of nodes. So the nodes go like this. There's a root node. That is your entire CSS file. There are rules, those are divs, whatever, all the elements, classes, and IDs. There are declarations, which are like color and this color is really important. It is gecko green, like the t-shirts, uh, and just a nice font. Uh, and then there are comments. So you can track all of those things using PostCSS and then perform operations on those things. Um, PostCSS provides a nice little API to, that is provided to all plugins where you're passed an object called container. And that, can, that object has a, a variety of functions. The functions are walk declarations, walk rules, and walk comments. They're essentially uh, a for each. I don't know why they call it that, uh, for those specific things. Now, if we go back to those things, a declaration is uh, a CSS property. Uh, a rule is a div in a class, and a comment is a comment, obviously. So the API comes with a lot of plugins. And because it's just an API and does nothing, the community provided everything else. Here's 
a list of some of the plugins. There's like 200 of them. So uh, I'll go over the first bit again. I think I just talked about this. And the main point is that it's not a preprocessor. It's not really anything. But there is a preprocessor plugin. So pre-CSS provides you everything that SAS provides you, uh, but with, just with JavaScript. So uh, in my day job, I have this. This is an e-commerce platform. It has like 10 different pages. It's very small, very easy to use. Uh, and it's got demo data about Willy Wonka. I don't know why. It's always been in our product, and it's always going to stay. So I wanted to replace SAS with PostCSS. So I did that. I installed PostCSS. Apparently, the normal library is broken, so there's a fixed one. And then I installed pre-CSS, which is the SAS drop-in replacement. Nothing changed again. So at this point, I kind of I had like a draft email to Thomas being like, this isn't working. I was trying to be funny. Nothing's breaking. It just works. I, how, do I, how do I make this story about PostCSS failing me and sticking with the status quo work? Uh, so I decided to try and break it. It's pretty hard, actually. Um, so what do I do now? Let's translate the website. So anyone that works with me knows that my main contribu <laughs> uh, contribution to GitHub is in all the QAs, I'll call out all of the files you haven't translated and just put IETN or internationalization like hundreds of times, like everywhere, all the time. It's the most annoying thing, but it helps. Uh, so even with my admittedly very aggressive stance, I've never actually translated a project. I've just made it possible. So how is PostCSS useful here? It's not really. So and here comes Mo. This is Mo. He's my coworker. Uh, that works on Slack, by the way. You can use GIFs, and it's amazing. What happened? OK. So Mo and I, uh, we run a meetup called Ruby Tea Party, where we teach people Ruby because there aren't enough in the community, and I love Ruby. Uh, this is really important to me because I taught myself to code, and the community really helped me with that, so I wanted to give back. So Muhammad and I always talk about startups and what we could do, and how, uh, so, sorry, Muhammad's from Syria, speaks Arabic, uh, and we're discussing how no one really caters towards the Arabic market. So wouldn't it be cool if we could build a project that works for them? So first of all, I wanted to try it in our own projects because I don't really have any side projects worth marketing right now, or ever, I don't know. I'm not very busy. Um, so if you want to come to the tea party, by the way, it's every Thursday, come talk to me. We have great offices and there's free food. Um, so the way we can work with Arabic is that there are two things you have to do. One is translate the project, and the second is change the text direction and even the flow of the app. So there is a plugin for PostCSS, surprise, that does this. This is an example of GitHub if you reverse it. Uh, they've still got it in English. I don't know why, but this is the point. This is Mohammed, a different Mohammed, uh, that I reached out to and almost offered a job to, uh, but he was in Jordan and didn't want to leave. Um, and he, you need to make sure that your site not just is, is in Arabic, but feels native to an Arabic speaker. So the way this plugin works is that it takes your CSS, this is the top and the bottom, uh, and all it really does is it finds all lefts and rights and equivalent things and switches them. So if you run the plugin, your position relative left 10 picks becomes right 10 picks, and it just works. Because every time you reference a side, like float left, position left, text direction left to right, all you have to do is reverse it, and then suddenly it works, because the browser is just this way. There's no up and down. There's no rotation. Great. Uh, obviously, before you can translate, so I'm going to slow down, going pretty fast. Uh, obviously, before you can translate, there's a bunch of manual work, like putting all your strings in your app into one file. So this is all of the text. I think it's another like 500 lines in that e-commerce store. It's only like 900 words, um, and I had to get it translated. Obviously, I could have asked Muhammad, but he's got stuff to do. So I found a service. Uh, the same way that I always find something new. If I want to learn a new technology or see how best practices it is, I go check out Discourse. Discourse is a Ember.js and Rails app. It's much bigger than ours, and it's open source. So it's always a good spot to work on like scaling problems or learn new things. So the way they translate it, I think it's in like 60 languages now. The way they translated it is with this project called Transifex. You just throw your strings in there, and you can translate it as a group, or you can pay someone. I obviously didn't have a group, so I found someone to pay, and it was like $130 to translate to Arabic. Incredibly cheap. Didn't want to pay it myself, so I convinced my boss. But so here are the numbers to convince your boss, by the way. There are 19 countries that speak Arabic natively, 280 million native Arabic speakers. 5% of our customers are from Arabic countries, and 
four and a half percent of the world speaks Arabic natively. natively. So why are these customers using our product at that ratio, which is higher than the standard, if there is something available for the Arab market? Turns out there isn't. If you look at, so my company does inventory management software. If you look up English inventory management software, you get seven million results in English, uh, half a million in Arabic, and if you actually use Arabic uh, tank, uh, text, you get even less. So uh, $123 and 36 hours later, my site was in Arabic. Uh, super easy. There we go. Whoops, one too many. Now it's in Arabic. Uh, obviously, I didn't translate the dynamic data. I probably could have given you example data for that. But uh, all of the layout is, and it looks pretty nice, actually. Uh, so this is where right to left CSS comes in. I had to reverse the, the UI direction in order to you know, make it more comfortable for Arabic speakers. So right to left CSS comes along, runs it over my files, and it's not perfect. In fact, it breaks quite a lot in random places, but that's actually a case of uh, first of type, last child, et cetera, when you're trying to do border radiuses, uh, and a few other things, and it just doesn't work perfectly. But a little bit of hand weaving magic later, and it looks great. So everything's aligned. I may have just used uh, developer tools for this, but shh. Uh, so TLDR, post CSS does nothing. But it provides an API for us to do everything. Like if we go back to those previous slides, I'm not gonna jump there because it's like 30 back. There are approximately 200 different plugins available ones that do like color blindness uh, usability. Um, uh, obviously, I think it's a translation one, minim minification, uh, CSS Next, CSS for BIM linting. That's really important to our team because we're trying to move to BIM. Um, just a million of them. One of them is CSS format. That one was great. I ran it once, and I think I committed 4,000 lines of CSS to GitHub because it tidied everything up. Great. So per CSS does nothing. It's just an API. Uh, but it allows for an awesome ecosystem to form. Uh, and one of the things I love about it is it allows people to stop arguing about SAS-like capabilities because they don't want Ruby dependencies in the JS projects. Uh, I love SAS. It's great. I'm going to stick with it as long as possible. But if I can get all of the functionality of SAS without using Ruby or libsass or whatever, it's great. I would love to do that because Ember is great, and I never want to touch Ruby when I'm touching Ember. Anyway. OK, so I think I've gone a little bit too fast. Um, that was my second to last <laughs> slide. I don't know why this video came out, but it came with so many cool gifts. Um, this guy is amazing. Side note, internationalization gets really addictive. Here it is in Spanish. Um, <laughs> that took me another 36 hours and $120. Uh, as you can see, it's super easy. Let's go more into post CSS. I can do this for hours. So the community is super weird. Um, one of the things that I, I, as a New Zealander, I dislike about CSS is that it's in American English. Someone fixed that. You can now write your CSS as if you're British with the U, with transparency, with center as it should be spelt, uh, and it just translates, uh, just compiles it, sorry, to the right version. Uh, our very own Sebastian Deckers, who's actually, I think, teaching across the road, he built this one, which is amazing. <laughs> So you can use uh, nonsense units in your CSS, and it just works. Um, that joke there is 20,000 leagues under the sea. Um, so my contribution was a, a post-CSS -English, post singlish style sheets. I had to get a coworker to check this to make sure I wasn't insane. Thank you, Jing Mei. Um, it was really hard to find a lot of things, so I ended up just doing colors. Um, this entire thing was built in like 12 lines of JavaScript. Uh, so that's just doing the walk declarations, and then you can just go over each of them, and it just grips. Um, I did the ice pick gun is my favorite. It does the, the, the gradient, and it's beautiful. Um, I, don't, I guess foreigners wouldn't understand that one. But anyway, it's great. Uh, man, I'm way under time. Sorry, I should have spoken slower. OK, uh, so if you want to learn more, check out Discourse. Discourse is an awesome resource for learning Rails, Ember, scaling, just anything. TransFX was the translation software. That took me maybe 20 minutes to master. Uh, the UI is not amazing, but they're getting there. Uh, obviously, PostCSS is available. And if you didn't actually listen to me, there's another video of a guy who wrote PostCSS. Uh, he needs available, too. This is Pusheen. <laughs> He's a ginger with a mustache, like me. Um, <laughs> 
I couldn't find a top hat in the monocle, but I tried pretty hard. Um, sorry, I went way under time. Do we have any, any questions? Let's keep this going. Um, when you were playing around with post-CSS, apart from um, dodgy translations and things like that, did you find any plugins that are quite useful? Or do you not really use it at the moment? Uh, I actually I dropped it into our main app and replaced SAS. Like it was, it did everything I needed to do. I was just surprised that it worked so easily. Like I wanted to be like, it's terrible, don't use it, but it just worked perfectly. So at the moment, I'm using CSS Nano, which is a minifier. Uh, I'm using CSS Next, so I can try and drop variables and use the standard one that's coming out with CSS four. I, th I think I don't think there's a CSS four. I think it's called CSS Next. Uh, and we're also using uh, pre-CSS to replace SAS, obviously. And I'm probably going to put in BIM Lint in the future because Brooke, my main front end coworker, is trying to get us to switch. It works really well. I also uh, I wanted to do one for color blindness because our company uses way too many light grays, and I want to like demonstrate that to our like exec team. Hey, I was just wondering, like you were saying, pre CSS works very well if you convert from SAS to uh, post CSS. I was just wondering if you use like multiple libraries or uh, SAS mixins, would it like fuck things up? So, pre CSS is a set of smaller post CSS libraries that give you all of those functionalities. These are post CSS at rules, which is the main uh, SAS mixin tool, uh, and I think then uh, post CSS nested and uh, post CSS. CSS variables. So pre-CSS is actually just a, just a package of plugins. So it gives you all of the different things that SAS uses, and I think they maintain it to be SAS compatible. I don't know if there's a less one, but don't use less. Just don't. <laughs>